Welcome to our online worship service at Spearfish United Methodist Church. As always, you're welcome to come and join us in person. We are located in Spearfish, South Dakota. Our church is celebrating our uh, commitment weekend and we're turning in our pledge cards and we appreciate your support as well as you're able to give. Uh, if you'd like to check into that on ways to give, you can check our website and that's at spearfishumc.org. So glad to have you here this evening. Our message is about the Jesus Creed. What did Jesus believe and was it worth dying for? But even better, was it worth living for. So I hope that uh, this creed can be yours as well. Thank you again for joining us for our online worship. Let's sing together. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I'll worship your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning, it's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me. Let me be singing when the evening comes. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I'll worship Your holy name. You're rich in love and you're slow to anger. Name is great and your heart is kind. For all your goodness I will keep on singing. Ten thousand reasons for my heart to find. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like never before. Oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. I thought that day when my strength is failing, and the end draws near, and my time has come. Still my soul will sing. Your praise unending Ten thousand years and then forevermore Bless the Lord, oh my soul Oh my soul Worship His holy name Sing like never before Oh my soul I worship Your holy Oh, my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I worship Your holy name. Worship Your holy name. Lord, I worship Your holy name. Our first scripture this week is Psalm 1. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, 
and whose life does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. Not so the wicked. They are like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to destruction. Please join in prayer. Patient God, we find it so easy to give lip service and check service to the commandment to love. We can say, we know of your love and that we respond in kind, but we far too often do not respond in loving ways toward others. We write checks to support ministries of compassion without ever truly feeling the deep compassion that service demands. Dig deeper into our souls, O God. Expose the vain selfishness and the fear that seem to block true discipleship. Engage us in ministries of justice in which the kind of love that you call us to have is required, not just in our spoken word or in our offerings of monies, but in our very passionate nature. Free us and inspire us to love all persons, those whom we would deem unlovable and those whom we find it easy to love. Help us love ourselves, respecting ourselves in gratitude for the gifts you have given to us. Then move us to use these gifts in service to you. We ask these things in the name of Jesus the Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. my heart and you will find willingness to serve for your cross has covered me with grace I don't deserve Our second scripture is Matthew 22, verses 34 to 46. Hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, the Pharisees got together. One of them, an expert in the law, tested him with this question. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. 
While the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them, What do you think about the Messiah? Whose son is he? The son of David, they replied. He said to them, How is it then that David, speaking by the Spirit, calls him Lord? For he says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand, until I put your enemies under your feet. If then David calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one could say a word in reply, and from that day on, no one dared to ask him any more questions. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God. The Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. These are the words from Deuteronomy chapter 6. These are the words that the Jewish people continue to call the Shema. Shem, which means hear. Hear, O Israel. Shema Israel. Love the Lord your God. These are words that are spoken by Jews all over the world on a regular basis. It's like their Lord's Prayer. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God. The Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. These are words for every generation says Deuteronomy chapter 6. These are words that are intended to be memorized. They're intended to be taught to each following generation. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God. They're intended to be discussed and talked about at home while traveling along the road. They're talked about in the morning and in the evening as you wake up and as you go to bed. They are to be taken along when you go on a journey to remind you. They mark the home on the doorways. We have one in our home that is above our doorways containing the Shema. It was brought to me from Israel from a friend of mine who visited there. So Jesus is asked then by the Pharisees, who are engaged in a game with Jesus, they ask, what do you really believe? They try to nail Jesus down. They, they're basically asking Jesus, what is your creed? What is it that you live by? What is the most important commandment? In other words, this is the one you better keep if you're a true believer. What is your creed? Everyone has a creed. For some of us, it's probably something we would put on a t-shirt. Don't worry, be happy. That's a creed. Don't worry, be happy. Better to give than to receive. Another creed. A creed that some people think comes from Scripture, but I can't seem to find it anywhere, and I've read it through a few times, is God helps those who help themselves. That's a creed that some people live by. I'm not going to trust God because God helps those who help themselves. One that's more common now is always be true to yourself no matter what. Sounds nice, doesn't it? It's a creed. Another creed might be, this too shall pass, which might mean don't put too much weight on the good or the bad because this too shall pass. Everyone has a creed. It'd be interesting for you to go home after this or even as you sit in the pew and wonder, what is my creed? What is it that I live by? There are a number of religious creeds. We know one of them. We know the Apostle creed, Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father, creator of heaven and earth. And, so, and I, won't, I won't challenge my own memory. I do have it memorized, but in public I tend to forget things. So 
The Apostles' Creed is one that we know and often say when we prepare for communion. Another creed that we share uh, with the church across the street and with many of our churches in the area is called the Nicene Creed. Now, I won't try to remember that one because I don't even have it memorized. But the Nicene Creed is another one that's worth looking at. And these creeds often came out of times of, of division in the church. And the creed helped to define who we were over against who they are. Creeds can, be, can bring people together, but they can also separate people. Other religions also have creeds. If you look at the uh, creed of, or the, the religion of Islam, they have five pillars that they try to follow. There's a power in a creed, in being able to define what you believe and say what you believe in kind of a, a pithy way, just a, a really short sentence, perhaps. But creeds often arouse the most fanatical devotion. It is enthusiasm for his creed that has created the martyr. And if we happen to share that martyr's creed, then the martyr is regarded as one of the noblest of humanity. He or she died for what she believed in, and I believe that too. Anyone, on the other hand, who does not happen to share our creeds is at the least regarded as an illogical fool, but more frequently as a perversely wicked person. They don't believe what I believe. Something must be wrong with them. It is this that has led to most of the terrible series of persecutions that have blackened the records of history. And for every man who is willing to die for his faith, there will be 10 men who are willing to kill for their faith. So I wonder today, is there any creed that's worth dying for? And Jesus' answer is the Shema. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. This is a creed worth dying for, according to Jesus. But it's also, as we'll find out in a moment, a creed worth living for. But before we get to that, we need to notice that Jesus adds an, something to the creed that's a bit of a surprise to his hearers. He goes beyond what is written here and he adds an amendment to the creed, a surprise. And the surprise comes from Leviticus chapter 19 and it looks like this. The second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. And so the creed, if we summed it up to something that would fit on a t-shirt, would be love God, love others. Love God, love others. If we could do that, we'd be pretty, doing pretty well as Christians. If we could find ways to truly love God and to truly love others. Now when we see it, we see love your neighbor as yourself and we, we think sometimes, well, my neighbor are, is my friend. My neighbor is, is someone who's like me, someone who lives in my neighborhood. But Jesus squashes all of that in Luke when he looks at this same statement and he brings up the example of the good Samaritan. And the Samaritan was not good, according to the Israelis. They were an outsider. They were half-breeds. Certainly they couldn't be good neighbors, and yet Jesus uses one of them to show what it means to be a neighbor. Love your neighbor as yourself. What if we inserted enemy in there? Love your enemy as yourself. And I wonder if the amendment was as hard for the Pharisees to hear as it is for us. They would have said, like we would say, I can love God and I can love people like me and especially people who love my God, but can I love those who differ? This is a difficult creed when your enemies want to kill you. 
This is a difficult creed when you want to kill your enemies. The church that I served in Omaha, we decided to use this creed and the two parts of it as, uh, as part of our worship center. And so when you entered the worship center, which had a wall in the back, when you entered in, you saw up on the wall, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And we put that on as you were coming into the sanctuary because you're coming into the sanctuary to worship God, to love God with all heart, soul, mind, strength. And then when you got into the sanctuary, as you walked out, we had these words, love your neighbor as yourself. As you come in, you're reminded to love God. As you go out, you're reminded to love your neighbors. It's similar to the message of the baptismal font. We have it here not because we have a baptism, but because it's a reminder of who we are. It's a reminder that God loves you, that you are God's beloved. But then as we leave, we're reminded to deliver that message to the world. Love your neighbor as yourself means helping them to understand the great love that God has for you and for them. So is this creed, which uh, Scott McKnight has called the Jesus Creed, which is love God and love others, is it a creed worth dying for? Is it a creed worth living for? Love God, love others. In his book about the Jesus Creed, McKnight writes, the Jesus Creed is more like a driver's license than a birth certificate. The difference between the two is dramatic. A birth certificate proves that we were born on a specific date at a given location. But a driver's license is just that, a license to drive, permission to operate. If conversion is likened to a birth certificate, we produce babies who need to be pushed around in strollers. But if conversion and the Jesus Creed is like a driver's license, then we can produce adults who can operate on life's pathways. Isn't that interesting? It's not something that we just put on a t-shirt, but it's something we actually live out. So how then can we live the creed? Well, I think there's a few things that we can do. You've heard these things before, but they're good reminders, especially as we're beginning our pledge or turning in our pledges this evening, that we can love God with our time, with the way we spend our time, whether we spend time with God or spend time tending for others, but it's time that we spend maybe on a daily basis in prayer, in worship, in glorifying God, in thanking God for what God has given to us, in asking God to deliver us from the difficulties that we're going to face in that day. Another thing that we might do is add our talent to that picture, that we could use our gifts that we've been given both inside the walls of the church and outside the church. The pads that I passed out are an opportunity for us to use our, our talents to serve the church, but we also use them outside the church. And then the third one is our treasure. If you think about money and time, most of us give time in order to receive money. That's why they pay us by the hour, because we're giving an hour's worth of time for an hour's worth of pay. And so if we're giving our time and our talent, which is how we do that job, then perhaps our treasure is a marker of that as well. So if we love God using our time, talent, and treasures, then how do we love others? And the answer is the very same way. We love others by giving them our time, by using our talents to help their lives be more livable, by giving our treasure to help those who have less than we do to thrive as well. And so today is kind of a test, if you will, a pledge card. What will you give? Will I be like the generous God who gives good things? 
Or will I focus on my needs first, not trusting God to provide? You see, Jesus lived according to a creed. His creed was to love God and to love others. We also live according to a creed. And my hope is today that we can live together into this same creed that Jesus held, to love God and to love others. Hopefully we too are living the Jesus creed. Amen.
Receive this benediction. People of God, go forth into the world. Love God. Love your neighbors. Go forth as people of love. Amen.